Yay! Glad you made it. I'm really happy that you're willing to give this game a shot. It's one of my favourite things to do with friends. Between the role-playing, strategy and just being goofy with each other, it's always a great time. D&D &D has something for every kind of player. Now, you said the other day that you wanted to just get kind of an intro experience before joining my regular campaign group. So I figured a more individual sort of experience would be a good way of showing you the ropes. Give you an idea of what the experience can feel like. Just take a seat whenever you feel like getting started. I've got snacks that should last us until the end of the universe, so help yourself to those too. Good to go? OK, so first things first, let's choose your class. I've got the basics already written up for a few of them, so you only need to worry about picking one. Do you want to be a holy warrior with the ability to heal yourself and smite your foes with a power? Oh, or maybe a wizard, using your magic to blast bad guys sky-high with fireballs while deflecting incoming attacks? Hmm. But a rogue could be fun too. Hit-and-run tactics poison, but it's also lots of fun to just be a barbarian with a big axe. Barbarians I've always had a hard time choosing when I'm a player. OK, next let's allocate your stats. You want me to explain how stats and dice rolling work in this game? You'll also see that your class already has stats that will best support their abilities. Do you want to make them better at what they already do? And like that, you've made your first character. Congrats! Now, how about we dive right into things? The continent of Faerun has seen hundreds of stories turn into legends. The Dawn Age, when dwarves overthrew the tyrannical giants and elves waged war against evil dragons, thereby carving out a place in the world for small folk. The tyranny of the Rose Dragon when the great red worm Yelvir Asalisar nearly raised Kalimshan and established her cruel empire. The time of troubles, when celestials and fiends alike were cast from their own realms, warring and laying waste to the mortal plane in their efforts to reclaim their divine positions. Yet each great story has great people steering the narrative. The Rose Dragon's empire only fell because Rafak al-Kajan and his companions slew the evil beast. The times of troubles ended because those like the mage Midnight rose to the occasion, in their case taking the mantle of divinity from the slain celestial Mistra until she could be resurrected. Now we come to the precipice of another such event, a budding calamity that could warp reality as we know it. Though there is no prophesied chosen one, no foreseen saviour, if you play your cards right, you might just be able to avert what is to come. Or perhaps your story will simply serve as a cautionary tale for those who survive. Despite this, it all starts with something as mundane as fetching groceries for your parents. We open on Nashkel, 
a village on the northern slopes of the Cloud Peaks. The late spring rains have abated, making the trek across town to deliver a commission for your father at least a bit less muddy. As you make your way back along the main street, though, it is hard not to notice that your otherwise quiet home is riddled with strained, whispered conversations. Standing behind his produce stand is Eric, one of the farmers living on the village's outskirts. Your father said you'd be along to pick up his purchase. I don't envy him his back problems, as if he didn't have enough to deal with already as the headman. Anyhow, here you go. I'm sure he appreciates it. Thanks, Eric. Sure thing. Just make sure to get home safe. What's everyone whispering about? I only caught a bit. Everyone's worried about the people who've gone missing. You probably already heard about Helsa not coming home yesterday. That makes the fourth person in two weeks. The trackers looking for her haven't come back yet, but if it's anything like the other three disappearances, they won't find it. People are real frightened. I can't blame them. Might be a good idea to not wander around on your own, even in town. Fair point. You watch out for yourself, too. Your wife would either break down or start tearing the forest apart looking for you. <laughs> yeah, and then give me a walloping for vanishing on her. But seriously, stay safe until we get this sorted out. Take care, Eric. Mm hmm You hear voices from inside your house. Perhaps it is worth waiting and listening in. You know, I just heard about it this morning. Does anyone else know? I caught one of the trackers before he could go out to look for Helsa. He said he'd check it out while the trail was still warm, if there was one. But I don't know if he told anyone else first. We'll have to assume that he did. People are already starting to panic, and this will make it worse. I heard people at the market this morning talking about unfamiliar monsters. No one had seen the things themselves, but the rumors are bad enough. This goes on, and you'll have a mob at your front door demanding answers. I'm surprised we haven't seen one already. We've got to get ahead of this. So what are you going to do about it? Give me a minute. I've got an idea, but I want to talk it over with Katra first. You're welcome to stay if you like. They should be back soon. Ah, there you are. Put the food on the table and come talk to me. There's something we need to discuss. Listen, you've heard about the people going missing. I'm not going to sugarcoat this, but the whole Kelsit family is gone now. Neri found- This is asking a lot, and I've got a feeling your mother's gonna kill me after I say this. Then don't say it. But I need you to go speak with Endandravair, and ask for his help. You're right. I think I will throttle you. Are you insane? People are going missing, and you think sending Katra out into the woods by themselves is somehow a- I have to agree with Ellen. They'd make a tempting- The trackers have been going on their own, and no one's bothered them. Yes, but you could just send one of- I want the trackers- After all the times you've- And Vyir's important. His ego probably won't let him talk to just a random villager. And you're not worried what Vyir might do- Unless Katra does something real- Mom, if I can help the village, then I'm- I was hoping you'd say that. Now, Endondra Vyir is a proud creature. He has the- A hundred? I took it from the village's emergency fund. I'd say that start with a low offer, like 30, and work your way up. Whatever help or advice you can give will be welcome. If we're lucky- I still think that this is a bad- If I'm being honest, it probably is a bad idea, but it's- Right. I... Oh, before you go, do you want to do a quick sparring match? Couldn't hurt to brush- One more thing. I'm sure you can find your- Don't worry. I'm- Just be careful, and- I don't like you being alone in the woods, Katra. Come back quickly. People keep going missing. 
It won't be long before there's no village left. 